We know that the Bible tells us to renew our minds, but what exactly does that mean? Today, we're going to look at a few scriptures that give us that answer. And first, we're going to start with Romans 12, 2, which if you have done any Bible study on renewing your mind, I pray that you already know this verse. Romans 12, 2, it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Amen. When I first became a believer, that was the first verse that God gave me because he knew that my mind was so worldly, that I had been raised and trained and taught how to live in this world by the world's standard, doing things the world's way. And once I became a Christian, all of that became upside down to what the Word of God teaches. So God really wanted me to begin by renewing my mind. And we begin to renew our mind by praying. Listen, we have to pray and ask God to help us to renew our mind. If we try to renew our mind on our own, we're going to grow tired. We're going to grow weary and we're probably not going to make it. I've had so many ups and downs in my Christian life because I, I start off good. Lord, help me to renew my mind. And I'm in the word and I'm memorizing scripture. And then I'm not sure exactly what happens, but life gets busy. My life takes an unexpected turn. And I find myself going through life in my own strength. And I grow tired and weary and think that this Christian life is not working, that things are not working the way that God told me they would work. Well, I have veered off God's plan, God's will for my life all on my own. And so I have to refocus. I have to refocus and remember what God told me. And I have to intentionally get back on that path with the Lord by coming back to him. I'm the one who veered off, not the Lord. He's still right where he was at. And he's still right there waiting for me to return to him so that he can renew my mind, so that he can transform me from the inside out. His way and by his power in his strength that lives inside of me through the power of the Holy Spirit. So number one, we have to pray that God would help us to renew our mind. Number two, we have to become aware of the thoughts that we are thinking. We have to recognize when we're thinking, self-focusing and self-defeating thoughts. Unfortunately, it's easy for us to get off into doubt. It's easy for us to get off into self-defeating thoughts if we're not careful. Our mind will begin to feed us old thought patterns just because it, it is a pattern and we've thought those thoughts for so long, so many years, that unfortunately it's easy for our mind to bring those thoughts back up. And we have to be aware of them. Otherwise, we're going to think that we are doing all that we can do and yet we are not making any progress in renewing our mind. I know that for me personally, this is where I was stuck because I literally believed, this is crazy, but I literally believed that I didn't really have any thoughts, that my mind was just quiet all the time. And that was a lie of the enemy. That was deception. I was thinking all kinds of wrong thoughts, but it was such a pattern that I really didn't even recognize them. So once we become aware of these negative thought patterns, we have to replace them with God's word. That's why we read our Bibles. That's why we memorize the word of God so that when we become aware of these negative thought patterns, we can replace them with the truth of God. And number three is just that. We have to replace our negative 
thoughts with the Word of God. Listen to what the Bible says about the carnal mind. And we're going to read 1 Peter 1, 13 and 15. It says, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. And for us, if we're not relying on the Lord, that's going to seem like an impossible feat. Like we could never do that. Well, I'm here to tell you on your own, you can't do that. We have got to be in the word of God every single day, meditating on his word, memorizing his word, allowing his word to transform us from the inside out. Listen, salvation can happen in an instant, but sanctification takes a lifetime. That is the process that we go through as believers. To be transformed from the inside out is a process. And we must be actively participating in that process for it to come to pass. And the fourth thing I want to say is almost what I just covered. As a believer in Jesus Christ, we must rest in our salvation. Listen, you're not going to lose your salvation. Once saved, always saved. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. But we can get off into works. We can get off into doubt. We can allow the enemy to condemn us when we are not perfect. Well, I'm here to tell you, none of us are perfect. Jesus Christ lived a sinless life. He was the only one to do it. So the way that we get to heaven, the way that we become righteous is through our relationship in Jesus Christ, through our belief in what he did for us and that he made us right with the Lord, okay? We will never be perfect this side of heaven. So we have to rest with our imperfections in the knowledge that our salvation is secure in our job is to walk this thing out, this life journey, this faith journey with the Lord and keep our faith intact. So renewing our minds helps us to stay on this faith journey because we're going to mess up. I'm going to mess up. You're going to mess up. And if we allow the enemy to condemn us and to make us feel guilty and unworthy and to make us think like we've blown it and we're not going to go to heaven now, that is a lie. If we allow him to continue to plant those lies in our heads and we never take those thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ, we just allow them to run rampant in our mind, that is how we are going to live. We're going to live defeated. We're going to live in condemnation because the enemy loves to heap condemnation on God's children because that's how he keeps us from living a transformed life. And that's how he keeps us from glorifying the Lord here. So I want to encourage you to pray and allow the Lord to help you renew your mind. Allow the Lord to transform you from the inside out. And I want to encourage you from 2 Corinthians 4.16, it says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Praise God. Day by day, he is renewing us from the inside out. And for some of us, That process might be short, but for some of us, that process is long. Some of us are hard-headed and it takes us a while to get things. So the Lord has to continuously work on us in those areas. If the Lord showed us everything that he was going to change in our life through this journey that we're traveling with him, I think most of us would have gave up at the beginning because there are probably so many things that the Lord is working on in each of us individually and specifically that we just know that in our humanness, we could never do. We could never 
transform ourselves into the likeness of Jesus Christ on our own. But that's what God does. That's what our relationship with the Lord does. When we have a personal, intimate relationship with the Lord, He transforms us from the inside out. And then we start to walk in the ways of the Lord, right? We start to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Listen to me, friend. You're not going to walk in the Spirit overnight. I'm sorry to break the news to you, but you are not going to walk in the Spirit overnight. You're not going to be saved and instantly transformed into the image of Jesus Christ without going through a sanctification process. We all have to go through it. So that's why we are called to not lose heart because it's a process. And it's long, but we have our entire life to figure it out. And when we get to heaven, we will be perfected. Once we get to heaven, we will be perfected. Amen. I hope that word encourages you to not give up. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your word, Lord. We thank you that you care about each one of us individually and specifically, and you want each one of us to grow, to transform from the inside out into the likeness of your son, Jesus Christ, and bring him glory. Lord, we just pray that you would help us, Lord, that you would start by helping us to renew our minds, Lord, because that's where all transformation begins. Lord, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope that word encouraged you. And if it did, please like and subscribe to this channel so that you never miss a biblical word of encouragement. Take care. God bless.